Hello, I'm Steve Karstensen, Editor-in-Chief of Dental Sleep Practice, a Medmark publication. Welcome to a live presentation and Q&A with Airway Patrick Tessier and his team of expert panelists, Dr. Jason Doucette uh, and lecturer Megan Brzezinski. In our webinar today, we'll be exploring the TAP system, including DreamTap, MyTap, AM Aligner and Thermacryl, TAP-PAP CS, and Mouse Shields. Before we get started, I'd like to invite viewers to use the question box in your control panel to ask any questions. Your questions will be answered during or at the end of our session today. I'm pleased to introduce our guest for today, Patrick Tessier. Patrick is a mechanical engineer with an MBA, a dental laboratory veteran and serial entrepreneur specializing in treatments for sleep disorder breathing. He serves as director of dental business development for airway management, the leader in oral appliance therapy. He's also founded Snormart.com, Modern Dental Laboratory USA, and Northwest Laboratories. Megan Brzezinski is a sales and coaching specialist with Nearman Practice Management. Before taking her position there, she worked in a dental office for nine years, in which five of those, she was the treatment coordinator, billing specialist, and doctor's assistant for sleep and TMD. She assisted the doctor in transitioning his dental practice to a sleep and TMD practice only. And Dr. Jason Doucette is, a, uh, is based out of Reno, Nevada. His extensive training and background in comprehensive dentistry over the last 18 years, coupled with his concern for every individual's overall health, has made him become acutely aware of the vital role that efficient sleep plays in optimal health and healing of his patients. In recent years, Dr. Doucette has become very passionately about heavily screening and treating all of his patients for sleep breathing disorders, such as snoring and obstructive sleep apnea. Dr. Doucette continues to pursue excellence while remaining on the cutting edge of dental and sleep health technology. Patrick, it's time for you. We turn the webinar over to you to learn more about the topics for today. Okay, thanks, Dr. Carstensen. Um, this is Patrick, of course, and uh, I'm glad you guys are here. I, I uh, personally have a big commitment to dental sleep medicine as a patient and, uh, and uh, you know, as a community service, really, to, you know, to all of our communities. Um, so I'm really happy to be here and, and, and uh, thankful to be able to present. And today what we're going to do is we're going to be talking about the, the TAP system, uh, the, um, the the whole thing. But uh, in particular, we have developed a, a clinical educational site that has all of our products uh, in in the one particular site that is easily accessible, uh, almost like a Pinterest style uh, website. And it's it's really it's not really marketing so much as clinical education. And so what you're seeing on the screen here is the um, is the site, and we're going to be using this as our in lieu of a PowerPoint presentation. So if you wanted to check in with the stuff we're talking about, tap dot wiki. So you can hopefully you guys can see this little bouncing red ball here. But that's the the site you can go to. Real simple to remember. Tap dot wiki. Uh, it's it's free. It's um, available to anybody that wants to come in. It's really directed at clinicians, uh, but it's also very good for um, staff in a dental practice, as as also uh, dental laboratories and the dental laboratory staff. Just so we can all be on the same page when we're talking about these different products. And after 20 years of developing TAP products, as you can imagine. There's quite a lot of different uh, ways to use it and different products. So this is just your one site to, to, to go through it. Some people use this as almost like an artificial intelligence uh, site. If you're talking uh, uh, from a laboratory standpoint, if you're talking with your dentist, you can quickly click on this thing and we can make sure we get on the same page on it. So it's it's always up to date. We uh, It's kind of an organic uh, site that uh, it's I don't think it's probably ever going to be finished. Um, so some of the stuff you might run into is a little bit, uh, looks like it needs some more work. It's because we're continuing to improve it as, as we go. But we've built it up enough where we feel like we're, uh, we're ready to go with it, and, and, uh, and that's what we've done. So um, it's kind of like a house remodel. It's just never quite finished. And just so you know, this thing's been uh, viewed you know, all around the world and, and almost every state in the, in the union. Um, so it's... Uh, People are, people are using it quite often. 
The uh, we do have a sister site, just so you know. We have a sister site called taplab.wiki, and this sister site is for um, laboratories, and it's essentially the work instructions on how to build the products, which is um, super important that we're always up to date on that. So that's by invitation only. So that's just for your uh, your your laboratories uh, to keep them up to date on it, so you, so you know about it. Um, and let me just give you kind of a brief overview of this uh, this site. It's uh, I, I found it actually from uh, um, a company called iFixit. It's a it's a derivative of their company, and basically we have uh, this one home page. And we don't need to log in because you're and we'll be able to see all the content on it. And then there's categories on these pages, what they call categories for the for the different products. There's also how-to guides, which is uh, you'll see more of these how-to guides within each category as well that uh, go over it. There's documents that are attached, um, and then uh, sometimes there's videos on it. So there's there's lots and lots of content on this on this on this site. And if you're ever drilling down and you kind of get lost, the airway management logo serves. You click on that, it serves as a as a return to the home page. Which is what I just did. So it's uh, also if uh, English is not your first language, you can choose. You, you click this little machine translation, and you can translate it into I don't know how many. There are bunch bunch of different languages here. So uh, Chinese, Japanese, Korean now looks like Turkish, uh, 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 Spanish, Dutch, um, German. So it's uh, it's pretty useful even uh, if uh, you know you're not uh, English is not your, your your first choice on languages so within each category and I'm just gonna just to go into the dream tap just to kind of give you uh, a preview of the thing you click on the dream tap and within the category there's more categories of course we can always drill down and then there's these little how-to guides and documents so for instance if you're using this dream tap product which uh, a lot of people like it. You can quickly go through here and and determine like if you want to prescribe it. What do I need to prescribe? Well, let's click on the prescribing, and it shows you here's what we want to use for, uh, for to capture the bite gauge, or the bite record with a pro gauge. Talks about analog impressions. You know, kind of the how to. The appliance design is a really important section for both the laboratory and the dentist. Uh, I'm just going to click on that uh, to to illustrate the. This particular important uh, guide here, um, because of there's a lot of ways to build this product. Just to kind of drill down into the, into the dream tap, and so this particular guide walks you through all the different variations, the pluses and minuses of them. Um, whether you want to use the in this particular case, the Medicare versus Quick Release hooks. Um, so it's it's all it's all in here, uh, and and pretty readily available if you just, you know, to, and the idea is that you don't need to spend a lot of time to find the information you want. You can drill down really, really quickly. So um, also uh, documents like the uh, prescription, we have our prescription pad in here, uh, but things like that are always available. Also, once you get into a guide, um, like, like here's one that's a pretty common one. How do you add the tap pap CS? To the to the dream tap. Well, in fact, you can add add it to oh, the dream tap, the tap three, the tap three elite. And this guide here, this is kind of the guts of the program. It tells you the tools you need, and it tells you the parts you need. And uh, and then it goes through step by step on how to 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 accomplish the task. How do you change it? How do you add this thing in? So in this particular one, shows you you know you pop off that front hook. And then you're going to be adding this this rod onto this thing. It gives a little highlights on it. Um, if you want, you can go up to the options section and you can download it as a PDF. You know, if, if that's preferred for your particular use, you can you can share a link to it. If you if you want to embed this guide into say your own website as a as a dental office or a laboratory, you can easily do that as well. So it's pretty powerful platform here that we've uh, discovered, and 
and uh, and I'm hoping that uh, you know everybody finds it fairly easy to use. So so this is the the general concept behind the, you know why we're here today to kind of introduce this. But rather than just blather on about the tap uh, wiki site, which I love to do, um, what I, one of the things I really want to do was to use this as an opportunity to share some of the insights for our auxiliary products and how they're used in practice. Of course, I'm not a practicing clinician. I'm simply a salesman. So um, it's, uh, you know, I, I can always share with you some information, but I always find it very useful in when I'm at trade shows and stuff to, to get to know uh, our clinicians and, and to get these different tricks and trades on it. Um, and I'll just, uh, we're going to talk about the MyCap here in a second uh, with Megan. But uh, one of the things that I found out, uh, just, just for, for instance, is that um, if you have a patient that's using Invisalign, you can actually use the MyTap on over top of the Invisalign when you go to change trays, warm it up, change tray, you know, change your tray, put it back on. So you can do combination therapy with it. And that's just an example of how uh, the, the clinicians in the field are so creative and resourceful. And I know that, the, you know, you have to be kind of to, to do your job, but I find it to be really useful uh, to try to extend the use of these products. And so the rest of this uh, seminar or, or webinar here is going to be uh, going over some of the tricks and trades uh, that that we've uh, had to um, explain to us actually on how to use these products. So, so with that, I'm going to uh, introduce Megan. Megan, now Megan was uh, you know was a sleep ambassador for uh, practice for a long time, and she used a lot of my taps and. And Megan, if you uh, you want to just take over here and let me know if you want me to change the screen at all. All right, sounds good. Thank you, Patrick. So yes, once uh, my office was introduced to the MyTap, it became a huge game changer for how we treated our patients and the protocol that we started with. Um, initially, to get started, the doctor insisted that I make myself a MyTap, so I understood exactly what was going to happen and how to generate those for all of our patients. After the first night, I came to the office the next day and I was just running circles in the practice. I just had so much energy from actually getting a good night's sleep. It was unbelievable. So what we decided to do was with all of our OSA patients, when they would come in and they were ready to go ahead and see if an oral appliance was the right option for them, they all wanted something immediate. They wanted that immediate satisfaction. Help me today. So what I would offer all of my patients that came in is I can make you a MyTap right here, right now, and I'll go ahead and process the information through your insurance to find out what kind of coverage I can get for the permanent appliance. Patients were great, ready to go with it. I went ahead, fitted my patients with that MyTap. They then had that MyTap in case they needed any repairs for that permanent appliance. So for me, it was a great hook, line, sinker. It got all but one patient to commit to an oral appliance. So a couple examples that I have of patients that I treated. We had a gentleman that was referred to us from another dental office in our city. And he would come in and he let me know that with his CPAP, every morning he woke up, his stomach was distended. And I asked him, did you contact your sleep physician and let him know what was happening? Yes, he did. And the results from the sleep physician over the phone were just dial it down. Didn't want to see him, didn't want to do anything. So I'm turning the pressure down. He's going to be fine. So I went over all of his healthy alternatives with the oral appliance therapy. Let him know I can make you a great alternative with that MyTap right here, right now in the office. And once I create that for you, I will see you back in a week. Follow up. Make sure that you're doing OK with that appliance. He stopped dead in his tracks, just could not believe that we actually wanted to see him back in our practice and we were going to take care of him. He came back in a week. He was doing great with his advancements. I, in two weeks, I had his pre-auth back from the insurance. And at that point, I was ready to move ahead, take impressions. And with him being titrated with the MyTap, I was able to take that bite impression with him already being successfully treated. So he never went back. I continually went forward and improved him as he went excuse me, as he went along. And he was one of our great success stories. So happy that there was an alternative to the CPAP, but without that MyTap, I may not have been able to do that for him. I had another patient and she was diagnosed with the UARS. 
She was having issues at night, staying awake, trying to help her kids do homework after school. She was in a new relationship. Her boyfriend informed her that she snores. So she thought, okay, it's time to do something. So she reached out as well. And again, for a minimal fee, I offered, I can make you that my tab right here, right now in the office. We'll go ahead and get you titrated. And most likely we'll be able to help you take care of that snoring. And I'm hoping I'm going to improve that energy level. And you're going to be able to stay up past six o'clock at night to help your kids with homework and get them ready for the next day. She went ahead. We made that my tap for her and she was successful. And in a couple of weeks, she called me back and her temporary appliance broke. She was panicking. <laughs> so she called me. She's like, oh, my goodness, what can I do? Is there any way you can make me another my tap? So I told her, absolutely, come on in, bring both parts. Let me see what's broken. And I only had to recreate the upper for her. So I didn't have to redo both, just one piece. Um, I gave her a new upper, put her back together. And at the end, she said to me, she goes, my boyfriend just can't understand why I'm coming back to you and why I'm willing to spend money on another device. And she said, well, I simply looked at him and said, you know what? I've spent a lot of money in my lifetime on a lot of things that meant nothing to me. And she said, this actually has value. I'm not snoring at night. I'm able to take care of my kids, help them with their homework. I feel energized. I can get through a day of work. She goes, it is worth every single penny. And if it breaks tomorrow, I'm going back and I'm going to get another appliance from them because it has helped me so much. So getting them hooked on that positive benefits by using that MyTap first had successfully allowed me to put every patient into a permanent appliance, which was really great for the practice. Yeah, that's an awesome story. Uh, it's uh, I've often uh, tried to recommend that, but it's great to hear directly from you. Somebody actually did it. Absolutely. Yeah. And everyone I talk to, I'm like, it's a great device to try. And like I said, I had that one patient where she was another UARS candidate and, you know, she didn't know if the oral appliance was right for her. Well, again, I have this nice, healthy alternative. That's a minimal cost out of pocket. And when they went ahead with their permanent, I actually subtracted that. So it turned out to be a nice free appliance for them as they went ahead with treatment. She just could not get comfortable with having an upper and a lower appliance in her mouth. So for her, it was a great alternative. She was only out a couple hundred dollars, not thousands of dollars to find out that this was not a treatment that would work for her. And she was so thankful that we had that alternative for her to try before she went with that permanent appliance. So it was great for all patients. Everyone was satisfied. Um, you know, after a while, I had patients calling it their little unicorn. So they made fun with it and had a good time. <laughs> Yeah, I think uh, Samantha actually has some goggles you can order. <laughs> yeah, right. from. So, Megan, what did you charge for that? We charged, yeah, we charged three hundred dollars out of pocket, and then we subtracted that from their permanent appliance. So, it in the end, it was a free appliance, and like I said, it was great. If they needed repairs, we had them titrated. We could put them back in the my top for a week while their repair was being completed, so they never were untreated. They always had an appliance, and were always feeling great. And how, how many patients got the MyTap and then you never saw again? What, just like, what just that one. Just that one female because she couldn't wear the upper and lower. Otherwise, every single patient that I treated with the MyTap, I didn't even have to convince them it was a good thing to move forward with that permanent appliance. They were just kind of nipping at the bit. Is my pre-auth in? What did the insurance say? Can I move forward? Can I get that appliance? So they were actually waiting for me to say, all right, I've got that. Go ahead. Let's move. Let's move you to that permanent. So they, they, as soon as they had it for a week, they came back in and they were so satisfied. I'm like, there's another happy candidate there. <laughs> so it was real easy to sell my pitch. Hey, yeah, Megan, heard... this is Steve. I have a question for you. Yeah. Uh, did, can you talk about what the physicians said when they found out that you had this uh, nice, easy way for the patients to try the oral appliance? Yeah, absolutely. The physicians loved it, you know, because we actually had great rapport with our sleep physician in the area, always let him know exactly what kind of treatment we could offer the patients. So he was able to confidently tell the patients that, you know, before you make that jump with your insurance and that out of pocket, I know they have a great trial appliance that you'll be able to afford and you will be able to succeed with before you move forward. And they're going to take care of you every step of the way. So they were very happy that we were able to do that as well. Yeah. I've had a bunch of uh, people come up to me at uh, trade shows and say, well, if the appliance is so good, we're never going to see the patient again. It's going to be like a perfect temporary that, <laughs> you know, you never get the crown because the temp was too good. 
but that sounds like it does, hasn't that didn't occur with your with your uh, practice. It, it did not. It did not. There's a few that last. Mine lasted well, but there's others. Like I said, theirs, you know, would deteriorate like they were supposed to. And once they knew that benefit and we had that insurance, they were ready to move forward because insurance had them approved. They didn't want to wait and then hopefully have a new deductible. So they knew, let's get this going right now and and get everything moving. Yeah. Yeah. Great story. Great story. Um, and just so you're seeing the screen here with the MyTap. Uh, when you go into this uh, tap.wiki site, uh, we've got a pretty good uh, flushed out uh, MyTap uh, category, instructions for daily use. There's a, a video here, there's a picture, a little, little picture of Dr. Patel, I don't know if you can see that. Um, and uh, there's actually, it, it's listed in a video. Uh, and also we have step-by-step uh, -step instructions on how to fit it as well. So whether you consume uh, your instructions by reading it and looking at pictures, you like videos. Um, you can still, like I say, you can you can download this thing into a PDF and read it. So there's many, many ways to to uh, uh, consume the the information here. Um, and then we've got a couple of nice um, articles that are in here. We actually have an informed consent that um, that uh, that some people use because uh, we want to make sure we tell the patient if they have not had. Uh, a test you do not if you I know you guys is uh, were all tested before you got to that point but some people want to deliver these things before they've had tested so we don't know if they've had apnea or not so in the informed consent it states that that we really want to get tested we don't know if you have apnea or not um, just make sure that you know that's what you're treating your snoring symptoms uh, and so it's it's just a nice little thing to make sure that the patient's not surprised by anything either um, and again we've got the Samantha's got a really nice video she made up here and, and then all the uh, indications and contraindications for the particular device and the warnings and, um, uh, you know, single use patient only, things like that. So I guess you could probably use it for multiple patients or you I'm not supposed to say that. <laughs> but uh, anyway, so all that information is for the MyTap is there and, and we sure hope that uh, a lot of people use it because uh, I think at this point it's pretty much the industry standard for prefabricated devices. So with that, let's uh, let's move on to another one of our favorite products. Um, it's the Tap Pap CS combination product, and uh, this is the where you can treat both uh, with a CPAP and a mandibular advancement device with this thing. I believe we're the only one on the market with this. Um, it's uh, it's really easy to add on to a particular uh, any of our, our devices and um, and use this. Uh, but I was uh, when I first joined Airway Management. Just to tell you a little story, when I first joined Airway Management. I went to a trade show in uh, I think it was Scottsdale, and this this dentist comes up to me and he goes, "Hey, I love that demo. Can I buy that?" And I'm like, uh, "Yeah." I was, just, I was with the company like a month or something. I'm like, "Sure, if you want it, it's yours." You know. So uh, so he says, "Yeah, I'm going to go see this doctor. And I really want to show it to him." And uh, and so we end up. Uh, that was kind of a great idea. I really like that idea. And so I ended up making a demo kit just for this TAPPAP CS. It comes in a little plastic container, so you can you can buy that thing and use it uh, as a demonstration for when you're interacting with the MDs. Um, and we, we call it the, the Dosette uh, 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 demo kit because uh, Jason uh, basically invented this idea. So with that, I'd like to just turn this over to Jason and kind of talk a little bit more about that and how you use it. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, that's the story. I was going to tell that story, but you already took my thunder on that. So, but basically, yeah, when I, when I saw the tap pap at whatever uh, uh, sleep meeting we were at, I just thought immediately, I'm like, oh man, that's the coolest thing. When I started doing lunch and learns, you know, with some of my MDs, I think I already had some scheduled. I just thought what a great, a great idea as an option to, uh, to show the sleep physicians for sure that, Hey, you know, if we can, if we got a patient that's tolerating PAP therapy, but they just can't tolerate that pressure, you know, we can get them into kind of a combo therapy and dial that pressure down, get the airway open with the appliance and then have the best of both worlds without, you know, major head straps, et cetera. So I, and of course, uh, my instincts treated me well because, you know, I did probably, gosh, another 15 or 20 uh, lunch and learns that year. That was, gosh, what, Patrick, like two years ago, maybe three? Yeah, two, three. Yeah. Okay. It's been a while. So anyways, 
Um, and since then, I'd say, yeah, every time I meet with a, a new physician, I bring that in with a couple of my other uh, appliances that I use. And that's the one they pretty much salivate over, to be honest, because it's so cool and innovative with, you know, we're not just trying to, you know, say, hey, every patient needs an oral appliance or whatever. You know, we're, we definitely promote pap therapy in the right situations, you know, based on what the patient needs. And then if they, you know, are not able to tolerate path therapy, we've got another intermediate option. So that one seems to really draw their attention in, which, which I found, you know, obviously very beneficial to get their attention, which, which is hard to do because you get about five minutes while they're chomping down food before they run out of the room. Um, so, and then the other thing that I found too, is that when I'm talking to patients, I recently had a patient come in last week, I think it was, and, and he's actually in the situation where he said, Hey, you know, looks like you can make me some type of appliance, but is there anything you can do if I still want to wear my CPAP with it? Oh yeah, sure. Let me just show you. Let me turn around and grab my tap tap and show them, Hey, you know, here's what we can do. So we've got a couple options. So um, it's just, again, it's one of those unique options that I have on the shelf to uh, offer patients and, uh, you know, meet with those MDs, et cetera. And uh, so if nothing else, I, you know, I haven't really made one yet because every, every combo therapy, that I've done has pretty much been um, the patients they've been able to tolerate some straps on the head. But um, hopefully here with the patient I just talked to, I'm going to get to actually apply this um, outside of just having it as some cool option that that I found most beneficial for my lunch and learns more than anything. So, well, if that's uh, if that's the main use of that product, I'd say that's a great use because we're getting more patients treated. We're getting more if you can get more referrals from the MDs. To get more patients treated, then then this thing's doing wonders, even if we're not building a lot of them. So I I, I find that uh, that medical professionals tend to kind of get stuck in their silos, and I'm sure you've experienced that too, where the with the MDs are like, well, CPAP is great, but these oral appliances, they well, most people don't even know about it for one thing, but when they do know about it, they think it's some cheap gimmick or something. The dentist is trying to sneak in or and so um, it, it lets you break out of those silos, and and, and uh, I, I like to say it's a it's a physical manifestation of two branches of medicine working together. Uh, might be a little hyperbole there, but uh, it's it's really true, and it it's so useful to just to break that conversation down to where we're hey we're on the same team here, you know not not we're not trying to replace your CPAP. We know CPAP blows, but uh, uh, that uh, we're not just trying to you know throw it out the, with the with the bathwater. It's a uh, it's still a very good treatment for a lot of people, uh, but the oral appliance therapy obviously is uh, has a greater greater range and and the um, and the studies show pretty significantly that the compliance is is so much better with the oral appliances. But anyways, uh, that's a uh, uh, just a great story. I mean. I, I never forget meeting you for the first time on that. <laughs> stuck, stuck in my head. I wanted to take it from you right there. I didn't want you to give it to anybody else. That meeting, you said I got to keep it until until the end of the meeting on Saturday. I said I'll be back. Just don't give it to anybody else. So, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'd like to say something about the tap tap, if you don't mind. Please. Okay. So what I I sometimes I'm sitting there with a patient and I've you know, I've gone through their sleep study and I've looked at their history and their report from the physicians. And I'm sitting there in my head thinking, man, this person really needs to use a PAP because they're obese. You know, they're all the things that oral appliances, as great as they are, are, are not great, not the best at. And they already have a PAP device. And so if I can show them that, look, if your main problem is that you don't like the headgear, you don't, and your the mask slips off your face. And otherwise, you don't object to your PAP device. Now I can give them a new interface, a mask that they've never seen before because, you know, the DME companies don't have this one. And it looks like it looks like what's real is that I'm trying to get their airway open. It's not like I'm trying to sell a device because although we can charge this off to medical insurance as a new appliance, it's really just trying to make PAP work for that patient. Now, if they ultimately still can't make PAP work for whatever re other reasons, now we're, we look like we're still an advocate for their airway, not for selling stuff. And including, in, uh, that message goes back to the sleep physicians as well. 
And so it does, even if we eventually abandon PAP and go on to a tap or some other appliance, then it still looks like what it really is, which is our focus is on getting the airway open. So it's being part of the team with a different tool as opposed to uh, just having something else for sale or being, you know, on the other side from PAP or those other kind of things that, that are ultimately not the great position to be in. So it's 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 a it's a great tool to have. It's a nice hybrid between PAP and, and oral appliances. So I think it's a great bridge and it sends an excellent message to the sleep positions that we work with. Uh, Dr. Carson, can I ask you a, a question about the billing? If the if the patient already has the appliance and you want to add this, uh, you know, our cost is uh, like $140, I think. Um, how does that work with their medical insurance? Do they get, is that a cash item or is that, or nope. can you bill that? No, you can bill it as a new interface. And, and we bill it out at like $195. So it's not really, I mean, it's a more expensive mask than it, probably any other mask out there, but it's still billed and they, we, they don't get full reimbursement. But there's no reason why their medical insur insurance shouldn't pay for this. There's not, not a reason in the world it shouldn't pay for it. Yeah, yeah. Excellent. Yeah, I've had uh, a dentist tell me too. He had, uh, we have a similar product that uh, is just a strictly a mask only uh, that's sold on CPAP.com. And it right. just is a upper, the upper airway, the upper part is just a, a MyTap tray. So right. there's no mandibular advancement at all. It's just simply a mask uh, option. And they've had patients come in with that mask and say, we need, I want more. In other words, they want the oral appliance as well as the, as the mask. And they, and they like the nasal pillows. Um, the, 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 the design of that product was actually done by an engineer from Fisher Pakel. And, uh, and we we're told it's uh, very, very quiet. It's really well designed. It's not just, um, you know, it wasn't, wasn't designed and built by a laboratory in other words. It was designed built by a mass company. So Another uh, testimony for the the connection between the what dentists can provide and what patients are used to, what sleep physicians are used to, what DME companies are used to. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. So that's a uh, that's another good uh, good product. And of course, it's all here in Tap.Wiki. Um, I feel like an info salesman here, but uh, the. Uh, one of the last product we wanted to share with you guys today and um, is the, the AM aligner. And uh, the AM aligner is, of course, the uh, morning repositioner that was uh, comes actually free with all of our products, including the MyTap. And uh, it gets used a bunch of different ways. Um, but rather than having me tell you about the AM aligner, because I don't, I, I have one for my own purposes, but uh, but I don't, I don't, obviously I'm not delivering them. Uh, Dr. Carsonson has, has done a lot of these and, and if, uh, maybe you can share some of your insights on this. Absolutely. So um, if you wanna help me with a uh, screen there, Patrick, there we go. Now I can do that. I can do this and here we go. So the AM aligner is something that I have made for every single patient I've ever uh, delivered an oral appliance to, and it doesn't make any difference which appliance I've delivered. It's always been an AM aligner because I, I can't think of a different product that I like better than this. And I've seen quite a few different morning repositioners. So as I teach this to other dentists, as I, I use it in my office, I'll show you exactly what I do. It comes in this, this wafer like this, and the instructions on the site there are show that wafer, but what I like to do is I like to do a little bit different than this. In fact, I heat if I use this wafer, I heat it up just a little bit. I don't, I'm sure that's going forward, guys. Let's see here. There we go. And so I'm going to back up one slide here to see if I can show that. Well, maybe not. Let's see here. Looks like part of a wafer. There we go. Yeah, I've got it now. Sorry. Um, so it comes in this wafer like this, and that comes with all the different products. I, I take these wafers and I warm them up just a little bit and I cut them into thirds because I really don't want to use the whole wafer. And I'll show you how I use it in just a moment. 
You can cut these up into thirds and use all those wafers you get with your taps and your my taps. You can also buy thermocryl in a bulk form. And it comes in these packages full of little beads like this. And it's the same. Plus. What we do is we put a few. Steve, we lost audio. Yeah. Can hear us. Just tightly together. Steve, can you circle back? Um, we lost your audio. Oh no, it's on. Okay, where are we? Okay, are we. Can you hear me now? Is that okay? Yes. Yes. Okay, sorry. Well, I'll start over right here. <clears throat> so we have a uh, a thermocryl that comes in a, in a full arch like this with all the tap products. We warm it up just a little bit. And we cut it into thirds because we don't really want to cover all the teeth. And I'll show you about that in just a moment. So we warm it up into thirds. But what we also do is we buy thermocryl in large quantities like this container or these bags like this, thermocryl plus in these bags. It's the same material, just in a different form. And what we actually do in our office most of the time is we take a little uh, a teaspoon of this in the bottom of a Dixie cup, not even as much as it takes to cover the bottom of a waxed paper Dixie cup. A little hot water in there. We use it Insta Hot, but you can use almost any hot water. We make a little silly putty uh, form out of that, and a taco shell over the lower front teeth. That and then with that, and you, this is where you can also use that third of the full arch thermocryl, same way. So you fold it over the front teeth like this, and you have the patient bite firmly into MIP into their getting your, all their teeth together. And what's not on this screen, but I have found to be extremely important and helpful, is before we do this step, we actually take shim stock and we identify a hold spot on both sides of the arch. So we have them bite together and, make, and identify if it holds on that bicuspid or that molar. Then we have them bite firmly into the softened thermocryl plus, and we check that after it uh, cools down a little bit, we check that same shim stock hold spot so we completely verify that the bite is exactly the same in the thermocryl plus about it so what we're doing right here is we're making a little imprint of the lingual surfaces of the maxillary teeth so you can picture it filling the overjet and the overbite with thermocryl plus when the patients get up in the morning and their jaws are forward just a wee bit because of using the MyTap or the, any of the tap products or any other device that you're going to use, then as the lower jaw closes together, it, the surface of that Thermocryl Plus strikes the incisal edges or the lingual surface of the maxillary incisor teeth, and it's a slippery little slope. So then the patients can squeeze gently using their closing muscles and it tries to force the jaw back into the alignment that it came from. And when, it, when that happens, then we have that verified posterior contact, just like it was the night before. And it can take several minutes for that to happen, but the advantage I see in using that just front teeth contact is the shim stock can be used as a verifier. The patients can feel the back teeth coming together. Of course, we've coached them that that's the goal. And they can also look at the front right there and see the edges of the teeth fitting precisely in the, in the bite that they had before they ever used the forward positioning device. That is three big clues for how we can make sure that our patients are giving it their best and not having a forward posture for their jaw using a mandibular advancement device, which is kind of one of the biggest uh, uh, risk factors of using a protrusive device to open the airway is that their jaw takes a forward posture and if they don't ever try to force it back to where it came from, then it may adapt to that forward position and cause some con complications that we all would like to avoid. So I, I have not found in 25 years of doing this kind of work 
that there's a better device to use in the AM aligner. And I've used it just exactly this way for probably 10 or 15 of those years. And I'm, I'm totally happy with how this works. It's a fantastic product. But if you use it that way, shim stock, uh, soften Thermocryl Plus, bite your teeth all the way together, give them a visual cue so they can see where it fits like that. They can feel their back teeth together. And now they've got a great uh, way to, uh, to, to re-index their bite. And we tell them, we don't know how long it'll take you. It'll take you as long as it takes. Some people it goes real fast. Some people it takes a few more minutes, but we have them just added to their morning routine. And it seems to be a, a nice way of doing that. So it's a great product, Patrick, that you have there. Excellent. I have a question for you. What do you do if you have like a class three bite or a class two bite? Yeah, that's where the full arches do come in handy because uh, if you have no overjet or overbite to fill, then you have no slope to create. And so what we do then is we, um, that full arch comes in very handy for that. But uh, frankly, I also find people with class three bites don't really have much of a problem with forward posturing of their jaw because their bites are kind of used to it anyway. So it becomes yeah. a, much of a non-factor and oftentimes they don't even bother with a, uh, a re, an AM realignment uh, tool. Just becomes yeah. another complication. Do you, do you feel that most of your patients are actually using the AM aligner? Well, I tell you, I don't know the answer to that question, uh, but I do know that every patient is, is emphasized over and over again about the AM aligner and we make them as many as they want because using the pellets especially, it's very uh, economical. So if they want a few of them, no problem. It takes moments to make. It's cheap insurance in my view, and it's a cheap way of, uh, of showing them that we're dedicated to having fewer complications with their appliance therapy than, um, than more. And, and so if we have patients come in and they're having trouble with their bite, one of the things we also want to create in our office is a culture of honesty. And so we can say to them, well, tell me how it's going using that morning reposition of that AM aligner. And they say, oh, you know, I didn't think I needed it or my bite seemed to be OK. So I stopped using it or I lost it and I never called you about that. Well, if that's the case, because we've had such a big conversation about that, then their forward posturing is kind of not my fault. And so they know whose responsibility it is and becomes a kind of an easy way for them to have a tool that they got and they know about. And if they chose not to use it, well, then consequences aren't a kind of a big deal between them and me. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. Jason, you use those, uh, using AM aligner in your practice as well? Every single patient gets one without fail. Um, that easiest, easiest aligner, most effective to make. And, uh, yeah, I agree with everything Steve said a hundred percent. That's pretty much my protocol. And we ask them about it every time they come in. Um, I'll have some patients, like he said, that might say, yeah, you know, I, I haven't been using that, but my bite goes back and I can feel my back teeth, et cetera. And of course we document that and we try to still encourage them to wear it. But, you know, at the end of the day, you can't force everybody, but at least you give them, you know, the best, uh, the best options to maintain their occlusion the rest of their life without any major changes. And, and, uh, but yeah, that's, that's our go-to for every case when we deliver. And the same exact way from 22 to 27, that same exact uh, procedure on, on uh, making it. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's, uh, that's awesome. So um, unless we have any more comments and stuff uh, about the aligner, it, it pretty much uh, covers what, uh, what I wanted to cover for this, this uh, webinar. Um, the, uh, you know, the tap.wiki site, of course, has all this, all this information on there. Like I said, we're going to, we're going to clip this in and put it into actually into the tap wiki site. Um, but I've just, uh, it just makes, just, I just love hearing the feedback from the clinicians, uh, about how this, how you're using these products. It makes me feel real proud to be part of airway management and helping, uh, treat more patients, which is, uh, to be frank with you is the reason I'm in this business at all is because I, I once I discovered how easy it is to solve this problem and realize how many people have this issue, uh, just to be part of the solution uh, is very rewarding for me personally. So uh, I, I thank you uh, all for your comments and and uh, and the helpful tips and tricks on it. And um, I'm sure we're going to be uh, Dr. Thornton, although he's he's kind of 
you know, pulled back from his teaching engagements and stuff like that. He is fully engaged in um, in, in uh, research and development. So we're, we uh, he he doesn't stop working on uh, new ideas and new products and stuff like that. So I'm sure we'll see more and more in the future. And and uh, a, 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 as we hear back from our from our customers too, like wish we had that, wish we had this. It uh, it's great just to be able to develop those things and, and bring them to market. So. Well, Patrick, what I'd like to say, add to that is uh, Keith is my first mentor in, in all things airway, and, and I'm, I'm, he's my big hero, and it's really interesting how he's always coming up with something new, and I, I think this TAP Wiki site, I know you might have created that, but the, the uh, I guess the creative uh, uh, force behind all of this is, is Dr. Thornton, so, so I, I appreciate the continual uh, evolution of what airway management does to, tr to help dentists out there because ultimately it's not actually it's not really even about selling products and helping dentists it's about helping all those airways out there and and i don't oh, yeah. know any uh, organization or person who's done more for that than dr keith thornton so i really appreciate you uh coming up with something new and, and creative to help the dentists out there I, I, and because that, that helps our readers of dental sleep practice magazine and bottom line it really 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 helps the the, the patients out there that need all of those uh, airways to be open every night for every breath. So um, good for you guys. Yeah. Thanks. Unless, uh, if, unless there's any questions from the audience, I think that we'll wrap this up. And we'll, I hope that you all have a great evening. I hope that you've enjoyed uh, what you've learned here. And you know, there's so much more to learn on TAP Wiki. Thank you, Dr. Gisette. Thank you, Megan, for your contributions to this. And, and I appreciate the people that read uh, Dental Sleep Practice Magazine. This is Steve Carstensen, and I guess we'll sign off. Thanks. Good night. <laughs>